All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from beautiful blue sky in San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Katrina Cravey, who is up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. How are you doing, Katrina? Yes, I am well, John. Yeah, Milwaukee, which we're pretty warm today, so I'm not as yeah. jealous of you being in San Diego. Yeah, I know. Um, it's uh, it's funny because we actually had a pretty uh, we had we had a period of not great weather here for about a month or so, which was bizarre. And you know, I was going to start asking for some tax rebates from the government here because <laughs> yeah. uh, I was saying, listen, I thought I was paying all these extra taxes for the sunshine, but <laughs> exactly, you should. California should be paying you back. Exactly. So Katrina, you're the co-founder of Charisma Q, keynote speaker, public speaker, and Charisma Coach. And um, thank you. I mean, people have been saying for a long time that I needed a charisma coach, so I'm glad I've connected with one. <laughs> oh, you are yeah. good. I know. I've already watched your stuff, John. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah that was so my you know, blatantly I said that was just blatantly fishing for compliments. What can I there say? There you go. You got one. I threw, yeah. I, threw, I threw you one. It's all good. Well, and so we're going to talk about improving uh, your virtual sales presence. And you, just before we're coming on air, uh, uh, Katrina, you were saying like your company is suddenly inundated with business, right? Uh, and and that's because people are really struggling with this issue. I think they are. I mean, what we're being told by clients is that, okay, they were fine with their sales team going one-on-one -on -one and just face-to-face mm -hmm. -face with people. But once you get behind this piece of plastic and you're now running from, you know, you're in your home and you're trying to create a good look for your company, like a really highly professional look, that's where the sales managers are coming to us and saying, hey, my team's not comfortable doing this. They haven't done a lot of Zoom calls. But now in the foreseeable future, that's going to always be part of our sales process, right? Even, even if they are opening up their offices soon, some of their clients are not allowing sales reps in. And that is going to change the game for people. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, as I said, we had an event the other day where um, one of the economists was saying that a lot of companies are not going to want to put their salespeople on planes and send them all over the place e either. So everybody's going to have to get used to it. But here's an interesting thing, Katrina, right? So you have a lot of these salespeople who are very comfortable walking into a room. It can be a room full of people. They're great in that environment. But you put a webcam in front of them and they're like, I have to switch that on. They're scared. Right. Right. Their number one, one of their number one fears, I'll give you a couple number ones. Mm -hmm. um, one of the fears is the technology. They don't know how to work it. They don't have the right equipment. Like, mm -hmm. let's give a round of applause to the IT people that just got them to their homes and yeah. their ability to work. Right. But now it's like, I don't have a good camera or I don't have a good place in my home to do this from, or I don't have a great light, right? Lighting is everything. And how does it mm -hmm. fill you up? They don't have those pieces of equipment. And then when they do, they're like, I don't like the way I look on camera. Like they're seeing themselves yeah. back. You never walked into a sales meeting face to face with a person holding a mirror in front of you. Yeah. And now it's like, ah, I look like that. Oh, I don't, I'm too this or I'm too mm -hmm. that. And my job is really helping people get over that fear. Like you're yeah. going to have to own this. If you're going to own it, what is the best way for you to be able to own your time on camera and use that 55% of your body language to make sure that your customer feels comfortable and that you're trustworthy? Yeah, and, and it's really interesting because, yeah, I mean, I get it that some people, they get a bit uh, intimidated by webcams and seeing themselves on camera for the first time. But to your point, to be honest, you just got to get over that because you don't have a choice. Um, but the second thing I would say to people, because we have done it for a long time ourselves, like selling uh, selling virtually and using Zoom and go to meeting before that and other things to, to sell is you can actually develop almost a, a greater connection with people through this medium than you do face to face. That might sound bizarre to some people, but once you get into it, you're going to discover that that actually is the case. Sometimes people are actually more relaxed when they're in this environment. Right. I think so, because I think that they're at least able, um, first of all, they haven't traveled for hours mm -hmm. yep. and they're not exhausted. I mean, some of the people we're talking to are like, I'm not going to be driving three hours anymore. I'm saving all that time and money and I'm showing up just like you said, it's, it's almost easier. So you're coming at it with, you're much more comfortable. You're not 
screaming in traffic on the way there, or you had double connections that didn't work on your plane ride over. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, okay, I'm comfortable. I'm in my home. I'm in my element. So how do you make your studio feel like you're inviting them in? Yeah. Right. And then the other part is too is, I mean, I always encourage salespeople is that, you know, switch your camera on, even if the other person doesn't. It doesn't matter you do because putting a face to the name is so it changes the dynamic immediately. It's huge. It's that 738, 55% rule. So, okay, so 7% of what they remember is what you said, 38% is your tone. So that's the telephone. But 55% is on video. So you and your body language. So if you're not using that, you've just reduced your ability to sell well. And I liken it to like, would you ever walk into a conference room wearing a paper bag on your head? Like, <laughs> hi guys, how's it going? And you just sit in the meeting with a paper bag on your head. You wouldn't do that, right? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be natural. So I, I almost, when I get into a call and I've recently done um, 60 people on a Zoom call that I was conducting for anybody who didn't have their camera on, I'm like, okay, you've just walked in with that paper bag and everybody yeah. was laughing. And then a couple people turned them on like, all right, I'll just get over it. But I almost feel like it's uncomfortable when they're not willing to put themselves out there. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. need to be willing to do that. Absolutely. And then your other, um, your other point is you need to put a little bit of thought into it and into the environment that you're going to um, be, be uh, broadcasting from um, and just put a little thought into it. Like find this. Yes, I understand not everybody has a dedicated home office or whatever, but you can find a space somewhere where you could that you can make presentable and that it, you can make look prof professional. Exactly. That's what you have to do. And like the branding behind you, that is perfect. I mean, that's what we're telling companies that if you have the branding behind them or even branded clothing, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I don't have any of that for Charisma Q right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we're, we're getting it, but we're moving so fast because I think a lot of these sales managers and leadership HR teams have invested in the video bomb bomb or um, a Lego, some of the software platforms that allow your people to put themselves out on video, mm -hmm. but nobody is invested in, okay, how do you make them good on video? And yes. so what our secret sauce is, I'm a former TV journalist, right? I had more than 20 years on camera. That helps. Like I know a lot of little tricks. And now all of our other coaches, they have TV broadcast journalist backgrounds too. So we're able to help you write the scripts. So for instance, let's say you got a 20 second video that you've got to put mm -hmm. out there. A lot of people don't know how to do that. Like how do you start strong, hook them, and then what I call stick the landing, right? right. You gotta stick it. Um, so there's all these things that people just don't know yet, but they will learn as this virtual selling world continues. Yeah, because there are so many elements to it at the end of the day. It's like, like you say, I mean, sticking the landing game, um, that's, a, that's a, uh, a, a great description. Because some people, you'd say, okay, they'll start off and they'll try to be enthusiastic, but it's maybe they just start seeing themselves or hearing themselves and they start to, it all starts to trail off as opposed to like keep a good pace and then end up beat, right? Right, exactly. And how you end it. And some people will end high, like, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> like you don't want to sound questionable, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Yes, you know this stuff. Or they get on camera and keeping eye contact with that camera is hard. So they'll be all over the place. Mm -hmm. And then and you're not building that trust because you're looking at your cat, play with your dog, or I don't know, but you've got to like, it takes a lot of energy to do Zoom calls and to stay on point. And I think it takes reps, repetition. And that's yeah. what we're really building is that you have the opportunity to continue to do your value proposition again and again and again, so that you're comfortable because you've done it a ton of times. And now yeah. you've built up the energy level to sustain. I mean, really all of us are becoming TV journalists in yeah, some ways. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, absolutely. People are getting, uh, it, it's amazing how, because of the technology, how easy it has all become. And, and yeah, it's, people have got access to it. But it's really interesting as well, as you say, is that people have to really learn and practice because 
let's face it, it really comes across if you haven't prepared or if you're trying to wing it or you're not comfortable in the environment. All of that kind of gets a little bit magnified. It does. And winging it never works. And you have to take that initial first step of feeling uncomfortable. I mean, I'm sure when you started broadcasting in your first interviews, you were probably like, I can't believe I'm doing this, right? <laughs> but then, That's for sure. But now we all, because of the equipment and everything you were just talking about, we've all become our ability to be our own channels. Mm -hmm. So if you're not taking the opportunity to do that and then just build on it and recognize in the beginning, you're not going to be good. So what? You just yeah. got to keep doing it again and again. And that's when it really pays off. And I think exactly what you said, you've got to prep for it. Winging it never works. And you just have to go, okay, this is the brave new world. And if I'm going to play the game, I want to play the game the best that I can. Yeah. And, and I think the other part too is to, is to remember it as a conversation that you're having a conversation with another person. You're okay. They happen to be in a completely different part of the country or whatever, and we're doing it virtually, but that doesn't matter. It's still a conversation. And once you can allow yourself to, to get into conversational mode, everything becomes a, he a heck of a lot simpler. It really does. And a conversational leader is always the best too. I mean, I've had the last, so when I got out of TV, I started, had the last three years coaching CEOs and leadership teams to be better on camera. Mm -hmm. And I, that's what I've always stressed to them is the being conversational, right? And I had a CEO that was interviewed by Steve Croft of 60 Minutes. I mean, we went together into those studios in 60 Minutes. It was a big deal. And I didn't allow him to take any notes. I said, we, we have practiced, you know all your talking points. I just want you to sit down with them and have a conversation. And I'm like, no notes. I'm like, it just looks like your script, it's, yeah. in, it's a script instead of a conversation. Mm -hmm. So then we walk in and Steve Croft has like five pages of notes and he's talking to his producer. <laughs> and I felt so bad for my client later on. I was like, I know I didn't let you have any of those things, but I just, as the guest or the person in the yeah. studio, it's just best to have a conversation and what if you've practiced and you know your stuff, you'll be fine. Yeah. And it's better. And you feel so much better anyway, at the end of the day, because who wants to be, you know, scrambling over notes and things, uh, as, a, as right. you said, I mean, it's, 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 it's excusable for the interviewer, but for the interviewee, not so much because you're supposed to be the expert in what you're talking about. Right. Exactly. And what we've been working. So we have like three components of the workshop that we're mm -hmm. doing. It's your set, yourself, and then your script, but it's not really a script. I like to think of it as really like nuggets of conversation and storytelling mm -hmm. that you can put in to the script that we're already working on with the companies and knowing their script, but then how do you practice and break that up where it doesn't sound like a script? You're just leading people through it. So mm -hmm. it's all about t teaching them how to tell stories inside of their conversation. Yeah, and obviously, I think the storytelling component is obviously really, really critical. And it's something that translates very well across any any medium, quite frankly. So I think the more you can use storytelling, the stronger it becomes and the more relaxed you become because people, people inherently like telling stories. Right. They do. People love to listen to stories and they will remember it more mm -hmm. than anything else. I mean, like you'll probably remember the guy, poor guy that didn't have his notes at 60 minutes, right? Absolutely, you'll, yeah. You'll remember that from today. And <laughs> that's really what people, I always say in TV journalists, okay, when I would interview somebody, I'd say, I don't, you're not the facts, you're the feeling. I right. want you, like I'm interviewing you looking for the emotion and the feeling and I'll get the facts from your PR company that'll give me just the stats, right? Stats bore people. You really have to turn those statistics into stories. And like, for instance, here in Milwaukee, we have one of the biggest uh, music festivals is Summerfest. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And they always come out with a list of how much toilet paper was used during the festival. And it wraps itself around the world this many times, right? Uh, I mean, that is if they can buy toilet paper now. Well, I was going to say, I was going to say there's some, there's some people who probably have that amount of toilet paper squirreled away in their houses now. Um, so. it, exactly. Yeah, it is. So. It, it is one of those things where there's probably people who bought toilet paper that you can't use in a whole lifetime now because of the hoarding that right. went on. But yeah, but yeah, it's a, an, another thing, an interesting uh, part of that, I think as well, um, Katrina is 
that basically the, the job of, of the salesperson when they engage in these in these virtual call uh, calls is to make the other person feel comfortable and be memorable. And you may, if that may, as we said at the beginning, may be a hard thing to get wrap your head around. You think, how can I be memorable in this small camera and I'm all constrained and all of this? But there are techniques to it. There are. And what we have is the art and science of charisma. And we have six different components. And really, it comes down to message alignment. You have to know what your company is selling. Mm -hmm. uh, your first impressions, your delivery, and that is all the science, right? We just, right. those are things that have to be done. But the art is really the empathy and the authenticity and your confidence level. And the empathy is you need to show when you are having these virtual calls with people that you care enough about them to find out what's going on with them and their pain points. And I mean, anybody who's good at sales will tell you, yeah, listen, mm -hmm. just listen. If you can listen to your client, really listen, and then hear at the heart of what they're really wanting, that's when you can give a great value add. Yeah, and I think interesting, uh, given the situation that we're in today with the, with the lockdowns and the pandemic and all of that, is that ironically, in some ways, people, uh, it's, it's easier to have a conversation with people because they have the time. They are maybe feeling a little isolated. They're more inclined to actually engage in a conversation than they maybe would be if they were sitting in an office where they'd just be screening their calls. They're more likely to take it and engage. And to your point about empathy, and that is... Um, everybody is dealing with this whole situation differently. So even starting off by asking, how is everything going for you, you know, for you individually, I think it's a great opening now. And as I said, you're more likely to get a conversation out of people than probably ever any time before. I am, John, you are singing at the choir here because <laughs> I do think that people are more willing to do these Zoom calls. I know that I am like having been a speaker where I was out there mm -hmm. in front of, you know, three, 400 people live. That's gone for me. So the yeah. fact that my husband and my son and my two cats don't want me to stand up in the living room and talk. <laughs> like, if you're willing to have this conversation with me today, I'm like, this is great. I get to yeah. go and talk to somebody else. So I do think that people are more willing to take the calls. And we were just talking to a client, um, I think it was like two days ago, who said that they've seen a number of people that are able to do video calls saying yes to them for their sales staff that they never were able to before. Mm -hmm. Like we, they were like, we've been trying to get this going and it never went before. And now people are like, yeah, no problem. Sure. Yeah. And that's why I think you have, you have to take advantage of that. And I think you have to get good at it, as we said at the beginning, because this isn't going to go away. And probably a lot of people are going to find that this is, I'm not going to use that phrase, the new normal, because I can't stand that phrase, but this is how it's going to be um, going forward. And, and therefore, you need, to, you need to understand the medium and get the most out of it. And I think, and I think part of it, though, Katrina, when you agree, is just make up your mind that you're going to enjoy it rather than resist it. Yeah! <laughs> it, I mean, that's life for anything mm -hmm. in your life right? It is all about how do you mentally accept it or not? Are you resilient? Yeah. Can you get up and recover? Can, if you enjoy it, other people will enjoy it. So I say they will mirror off of you. If you come in and you're like, hi, I don't know if you really want to be having this discussion, <laughs> um, but okay. So like, that's boring, right? Yeah. People will be boring to a boring person. <laughs> like, yeah, you've yeah. got to pump up the charisma and people will match it. And then they'll walk away from you going, why do I feel so good? Mm -hmm. I feel so good because you gave them energy. You handed it off to them and they grabbed it and said, man, I just had a really great connection with that person. And they'll do business with you because you've just made them feel good about them. Yeah. And that's and really I good. And I would also advise people not to not to start off your conversation by going saying something like, well, I'm sorry that we have to do it this way over Zoom. I'd much prefer if we could be if I could come to your office and all of that. And I, I just don't you should you should start off as if this was your first choice way of communicating. And it's the best way of communicating, because otherwise you've already said this is a second rate experience you're about to have. Yes. Okay. So can I steal that? Because I'm going sure. to use that. All right. I'm stealing it because I'll use that You're in welcome. our next script, uh, web, the web, um, 
live event that we're doing with people. Because I think that's an important piece. And I never thought about telling them not to say that. And I bet you they would say that. Mm -hmm. I would never say that. But it's great for you to help me put in the mind of the regular person is that is probably very true to what they're putting out there. Yeah, and because it's bad I mean, energy, right? It is it's bad. bad. It's bad energy. And I, and I have heard a lot of people recently saying things, maybe saying things um, like that, but also like, oh, well, I, I, can't, I can't wait till everything. Gets, and when I'm back in the office and when everything is back to normal and all of this and you're and number one, you don't know that's true to begin with. You don't know. And you don't know when, when is. And, and right. second off, in the as I said, in the meantime, you're kind of communicating. Listen, I'm, this is going to be pretty crappy right now, but we're going to do it anyway because there's nothing else I can do. So here, welcome to your second rate experience. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. No, and I think you do have to embrace it. I mean, look at, was it Twitter that just announced that they don't have to come back to the office? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got offices here, very large buildings, um, who we've been told by they might not be coming back till spring of 2021 and they may never come back completely that same mm -hmm. way again. Um, so I think that if anything else of the dozens of companies that we've talked to 100% said this will change everything, at least some part of their sales process is going to go virtual. And I've had a one mm -hmm. client say hundred percent virtual. We're creating a whole new process this way. Yeah, and, and for I, people I, I, who are I, selling into hospitals, oh yeah, uh, we talked to one client who said we're not getting into hospitals until probably late fall. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I think the other thing from an organization point of view, and I've spoken a lot about this, is I think it makes more and more sense. Um, to allow virtual working where you can, because let's face it, uh, yeah, as I was saying earlier, I mean, I came to the States 22 years ago. So I have, I came to Silicon Valley during the dot com. So I was there during the explosion and the implosion. Um, then we obviously had the, you know, the, the financial and the real estate crisis. Now we've had this. So the fact is that these things come along every so often, some event, 9 11 as well. Sorry, I forgot. So a lot of these, it, catastrophic events come along come along and what happens to a lot of people they get laid off from their jobs so why should they live in high cost areas to be close to a physical building if they have no real job security at the end of the day so i think it it really it really behooves companies to start thinking about how they can allow people live where they want feel more secure have a better quality of life and they still get the best uh, quality of people I agree. And I think there, the fear in the past might have been that they wouldn't be as productive at home. Mm -hmm. But I think that they're seeing they are productive. They are saving more of their life and not sitting there on traffic on the way and all of that. And if they can, the only thing I'm hearing from people is that I miss my colleagues. I miss going to the water cooler and chatting, you know, and um, we spent like five minutes of this virtual call that I had with 60 people with people going around the room and going, hey, I haven't seen you in so long. Mm. Uh, so that is missed. But if companies start to integrate a happy hour mm. virtually yes. with their teams, if um, I've heard some really creative ideas, they had a scavenger hunt. So in their homes with their kids, they're running around right. doing a scavenger hunt. So there's ways of making you feel like you have a culture, even if it's not in a building. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to be honest with you, with our own company, I have, um, we don't see each other very often um, physically, but we have built great relationships over the years virtually, and you can do that. In fact, sometimes you can do it better because it, there's something more deliberate about it. But it's also like you can call somebody for a chat on Slack or whatever, like quickly and just connect with them if you want. And it's it's very easily done. I think it gets back again, because what you just said is you can get creative. It gets back again to do you want to make this the best experience possible or do you just want to sort of lament that you can't do it the other way? I mean, I'm just a believer in this is the way it is right now. For us, it's, it's always the way it is. But for some of you, it's the way it is right now. You can embrace it. Embrace it. Right. And if you want to be a high achiever, mm -hmm. that's what you do. Yep. You embrace it and you bring your most professional self forward. I mean, part of it was why we got this thing going so fast is that these sales managers are like, if I have to look at any more nose hair or the ceiling fan because of the way that, yeah. <laughs> like they don't realize like you would never invite somebody in the office and like go up to them and be like, 
Hello. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can do that. Um, yeah. But people weren't getting the concept of the camera and how that experience, like yeah. you said, it's got to be a good experience. So how do we help them create a great experience on camera? Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Katrina, this has been uh, this has been fascinating. All of Katrina's information will be in her contributor bio. But before we go, please do tell people more about yourself and Charisma Q. Well, thank you so much, John. Yeah, if you're interested in knowing like the equipment that we use and three tips that could really help your virtual sales, it's just charismaq.com. And it's a Q, like the letter Q. And uh, we have a downloadable there and a lot of information. So anything that uh, you want to talk about, give me a call or we'll do it on virtual. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, Katrina, thank you very much. My name is John Golden, sales pop online, sales magazine and pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.